Hello, welcome to Chrysalis Invictus Tarot. My name is Elizabeth, and today I have for you another character sketch. And character sketch is basically for anyone who's interested in a deeper dive into perhaps someone's personality, their personal story, what makes them tick. Um, it's also a great resource for artists or writers who are interested in more character development. Perhaps you're stuck on a particular character or knowing what motivates them. And so you can ask about um, fictional people as well as real people is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I hope you really enjoy this. I really love doing these readings. We have five different piles to start with today. Um, and I haven't, um, in some of the other readings, they've been um, gendered or masculine or feminine. These are um, neutral. I may pick up on some more masculine or more feminine energies, but for the most part, this is a neutral reading. Um, and if I use he or she, just know that that's a pronoun that I'm using to describe the energy rather than the person necessarily. Okay. So pile number one, Jasper, you know, I really feel like I should prepare myself and find out what these stones are called, but I, I haven't. This one looks like it's got peacock colors. It's really beautiful. And perhaps one of these stones resonates with the person that you're asking about. It really reminds you of them. This is a ruby or that's a ruby in there. <laughs> I know that much. And there we go. So pile number one, two, three, four, and five. Let's take a moment to take a deep breath in. Maybe we light some incense. Maybe we light a candle. Taking some long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose. And out through the nose. And I'm going to light this candle as an intention for some clarity for us. So for whoever is watching this channel, whoever is watching these readings, that we can receive information and wisdom that aligns with our highest and greatest good. So making your selection, I'll meet you at your pile. Okay, pile number one, you chose the Picasso I think it's Picasso Jasper. It's, I love this stone. It's really good for chaotic energy. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at what energies represent this person that you're asking about or what we can learn about them. Fortune. Okay, so this is a person who is extremely lucky. They may take this for granted. I'm getting that they take this for granted. So it could be that they've come from money. It could be that they've um, just been really lucky in, they just sort of walk in and they get a job. Um, people just want to give them things. That's this person. Um, there's a lot of solar energy here. There could be a difficulty in grounding experiences or taking things seriously. So take a look at that. It's sort of like trine energy. So if you know astrology, a trine is really fortunate energy. It's a really, it's blessings, but it's blessings that sometimes we can't, we don't know how to um, appreciate them because, because they come so easily. So we'll th a lot of things come easily to this person. <laughs> Money. Okay. So this person, um, and even if they don't have money, they have the ability to manifest money. They've got money hiding everywhere. And so this is the kind of person who has a lot of side hustles or a lot of different streams of income. Or if they don't, they should. So if you are watching this about yourself, which is something I forgot to mention at the beginning, you can also watch this about yourself to see if there's any insights that can help you. Um, 
or maybe you asked about someone and this sounds more like you. Um, this is a situation where, you know, there's a tremendous amount of Jupiter, <laughs> Jupiter energy, Jupiter is on your side, a lot of expansion, a lot of good fortune, um, and like just the ability to draw whatever you want materially in toward you. Look at all the money, all the fortune. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a deeper look into this person. So what was their, ch what can we get a card to represent their childhood? Oh, we got too many cards. So we're gonna get a card to represent their childhood. Cards for, oh, okay. Okay, whoa, all right. So this person may not um, fully recognize their abilities yet because of their childhood. So they had a very difficult, I'm getting a very um, buttoned up, closed off, emotional, emotionally closed off childhood. Um, where if there was interaction, it wasn't, it was, it was crossed. It was um, aggressive potentially or um, full of conflict. It was better to just be silent and be in the background and to hide than to be noticed. So this person um, may not see the magnitude of their or their, their, the magnitude of their personality may not be showing through. It depends on how mature they are at this point. Um, but there was definitely a lack of communication in the home, in their childhood, and a lot of conflict, be, probably because of that. Um, and there was this sort of um, maybe icing out. Um, they could have experienced... It's a subtle form of abuse, but when someone doesn't respond to you. So I'm really getting that this person, there's a lot of Taurus energy. This person, um, Taurus and Capricorn, this person, um, they may be really funny, actually. And yeah, 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 I can feel that. They're really, really funny. And so, um, or some of them. <laughs> Or they have other personality traits that get them attention. So perhaps they broke the tension in the home with their sense of humor or it was their way of demanding attention because they were sort of neglected. So can you show us some cards? What, do, what else do we want to know about this person? Oh my goodness, my cards are all flipped around. Let's find out about their sense of humor and how they relate to others. How they relate to others. Okay. Interesting. So this is the kind of person that has a like um, a really big personality, but they tend to hide it. They tend to. Um, not really show it that much. Now I'm getting Virgo. So <laughs> a lot of earth energy in this pile. Um, there's this like, like hiding your light under, isn't there something about hiding your light under a bushel or something like that? That's what I'm getting here. So this person definitely is not fully expressive of these things. Right. So they may have come from money. They may have um, that may have been the only way that care was expressed to them. Um, so they have a hard time being emotionally expressive and they tend to shrink um, from taking up too much space. I always think this card is hilarious because I, I, I don't know if that's a ham or a book. And I feel like it's two very different readings depending on which, but I'm getting ham here or like, it almost looks like a chunk of, I'm a vegetarian. So this is going to sound stupid, but like if you were to slice it up, it would be bacon. So I'm getting this, like this person can be really adorable, but it was like their, 
their defense mechanism. It was how they survived, again, with that sense of humor. So they relate to other people by being smaller. They retreat into the background. Okay, and I am getting a really strong masculine for this pile. Um, so there is an imbalance of feminine within them. So it could be that they had difficulty with their mother. I'm getting like a, a I don't want to say neglectful because there's a spectrum, right? So from, it could be anywhere from just a, an emotionally distant mother or someone who isn't able to connect as well, all the way up to abusive, depending on the situation. So because of this, this person has developed um, some mechanisms within them that, that do not favor their feminine side. So again, emotionally, an emotional expression, maybe they, they have difficulty nurturing, they want to nurture. It could be that they've taken up, they may buy presents. This is the kind of person who would do acts of service or buying gifts in order to de demonstrate love. They could be secretly, I'm getting a secretly affectionate. Like you wouldn't expect them to be affectionate. They didn't receive a lot of affection, but they are a very affectionate person. You just have to get to that layer with them because they're hiding, right? They're hiding. This is not a person who is fully expressing who they are. Very few people would actually know that side of them. Um, yeah, and that can make them quite intoxicating to people who... Um, like it makes people feel special when they get into that space with them. So what else can we know about this person? So I'm getting really strong earth energy. I'm also getting really strong masculine energy here, but it could be a feminine who has a feminine imbalance and that happens as well. Yeah, so this person really loves to give gifts and to receive gifts and they see um, they really relate to their world materially. They have, um, beautiful things in their home, comfortable things in their home. They like to have peace, but part of that peace is, and can be, and again, this depends on where they are in their evolution. So a more, a healthier version of this personality is going to have, um, quiet in the home or harmony and peace in the home from excellent communication in the less evolved version of this personality they have um, difficulty they will just block out anyone that brings conflict into the home rather than dealing with it so there there's both layers there there's um, on that spectrum once again and and that really has to do with how much they've healed this mother wound because um, it is a wound regardless of how big it is um, so let's get one more card about this person. So if you are, if this is someone that you know, sometimes knowing these things or having this information about a person can really help you to, um, understand where they're coming from, particularly if they're, this is the kind of person that would, um, ice you out or just not speak um, and here we have the lilies so there's this like calm peaceful energy about them it's really comfortable when this person is is um more evolved and more healed this is a very very comfortable person to be around it can be that you know you could be feeling really scattered, really chaotic, and they would make you feel calm and peaceful. And they really like harmony, peace, comfort. They want to have everyone around them taken care of. Um, they could be really interested in gardening, the outdoors. So 
I actually want to get to, I think, two more cards about this person. I feel like we're not quite done. What else can we know about them? Okay. So despite what they've been through in the past, there's this sense of hopefulness. There's this brightness about this person. Um, there's something harmonious and magnetic about them. And people are really drawn to their energy, particularly chaotic people, which means that um, they may have a history of really chaotic partners, really like romantically um, they may have had a lot of difficulty with romantic partners because they attract people who are um, really dramatic is what I'm hearing, really um, chaotic. And um, But somehow with this sturdiness, they've been able to maintain hope. So there is this journey for them away from the dysfunction of their, their youth and this imbalanced feminine toward a really beautiful, peaceful serenity and home. Home is very, there's something very big about this person, but in a, in a quiet way. I really like it, it's cozy. You just wanna cuddle up inside of this energy. Yeah, and so there's th this person could come off as very mysterious or um, they could suffer from low vib vibrational energy, a bit of depression. Whether they demonstrate this or not, it, it would be there, this... Um, you know, in the in the denial um, portion or in the in this denial of themselves, there could be some some depression. And I want to get another card on how they receive love. How does this person receive love? How does our earthy person here receive love? They don't have to be an earth sign, but um, they may have a lot of earth in their chart. They receive love. Mm, yes. Gifts, acts of service, comfort, home, stability, foundations. So if you are able to, if you don't rock their stability, this person um, receives love through stability. And you know that... A personality like this, when, when we say giving gifts, it doesn't mean it has to be lavish gifts. Um, it depends on the person. I mean, there is some fancy energy here, some fancy energy. So it depends on, you know, really what, what kind of earth sign you're looking at too. Like a Taurus is going to want finer things um, than a Virgo, right? So it really just depends. But this is a strong foundational energy and finally, all right, so this is also a person that is going to give authentic compliments. They, they really don't, um, if there's an untruth to speak, they won't speak it. They just cannot flatter, falsely flatter people. All right, so that is person number one. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Please leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonated and we'll see you soon. Hello, welcome to your reading pile number two. So this could be about someone you know, personality sketch of um, yourself or perhaps it's a character that you're writing you need a little bit more development. So let's take a look at the dominant energies, faithfulness. This is a proud person. This is someone who 
takes pride in the people around them, takes pride in who they are, the choices that they make, the things that they have, the accomplishments. They are very driven by community, a sense of propriety is a word that's coming in really strongly actually. Um, but also like ethical, like a very ethical person. So it could be, I'm getting like a strong force. So it could be that they, you know, are willing to take the consequences of whatever they believe in and whatever they stand for. So they sort of stand on the front lines of things as like, um, I'm getting a lot of different signs for this. Like I'm getting a Leo Aquarius situation. Leo and Aquarius are opposite one another. So, um, you know, two sides of the same coin in a, in a sense. And I'm really getting that Leo Aquarius energy here, but it doesn't have to be old woman. <laughs> okay. So this could be someone that people would describe as an old soul. Um, this is someone who almost ages backwards. So when they were a child, they really shocked people with how, um, mature or wise they would be. Um, they maybe didn't fully understand their peers or didn't understand, you know, why people were doing certain things. Um, this could also pertain to their hobbies and their interests. I'm seeing like puzzles and just having like really simple, um, interests, but being again, like this is a person who's like, yeah, I'm nerdy, but, um, I don't care. Like, I think it's super cool. Um, this is someone who, who takes a lot of comfort in being alone as well. So I'm getting a really strong introverted vibe, which is sort of counter to the Aquarius Leo energy. So there's definitely other energies present there. Um, like they take outward pride, but it's because they build, they built this strong inner world. This person has a very strong inner world. So let's get a look at what can we know about this person? I'm going to use, I have two Lenormand decks that I'm using. Um, and I think I'm going to use this one for you guys. I don't know if you want me to shuffle on camera. Leave a comment. Let me know. <laughs> I'm not a great shuffler visually, I feel. <laughs> but that's okay. All right. Woo. That got chaotic. This person does not necessarily like chaotic. They are, yeah. Lovers of home, they love cuddles. This is such a cuddly person, um, both with the dog and with the bear. There's a sense of loyalty. So um, if this person accepts you into their circle, into their world, it's, it's because they really, truly feel connected to you. They're not someone who's going to, um, they don't suffer fools is what I'm hearing. Um, it's really important to them that the people around them are, have a lot of integrity and they're very protective of the people around them. Again, they take pride. So with this pride is, um, discernment, a lot of discernment. Um, I, I wouldn't say that this is the kind of person that dates very much. Like they would find their partner and then just kind of be content with that. Um, so they probably don't date around a lot. I'm getting, it's really interesting. There's a lot of, the last pile had a really cohesive sort of um, element and this one has a lot of different elements to it. Okay. So despite this person being, uh, um, quite stable, they have gone through a lot of different evolutions. I feel that there is a lot of, um, study here, a lot of, um, uh, scholastic interest. So it could be that they're an academic or just that they're really interested in reading, in 
studying and delving deeper into knowledge. So there's a, a reverence for knowledge here. Um, but because of that, it feels like their, their thoughts have undergone a lot of um, revitalizing. Like they think they know the truth and then something comes up and then they have to rethink it. So um, there could be a reverence for philosophy here in that sense, in, in that it's like, um, you know, where you're constantly dredging up a new truth or psychology as well. Um, through the process of learning, you learn that you know less than you thought you did, that kind of thing. And so there's that energy here for this person. So a really interesting person to have a discussion with um, and someone who has a very small inner circle, which doesn't mean that they're not social. It just means that they're not, um, they're not going to just let anyone in to their, like, closely, I guess you could say, because they, they'd rather spend time alone. Let's take a look at their childhood. What do we have for person number two's childhood? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we have lady and ship. Okay, interesting message. I'm getting that there's a glass bottom to this ship, that there's this um, glass bottom that looks down deep into the ocean. So the ocean being the realm of emotions. There was some sort of insight into deep emotions in their childhood, potentially through the mother or through the feminine, um, the more feminine parent. And because of this, so really what I'm getting is that there was mental health, there was exposure to poor mental health or to issues of mental health early on in life and throughout their life. It could be that this person either experience that themselves or that they experienced it through having a parent that was that was suffering with some sort of mental um, discomfort but what it did was it created this um, compartmentalization so this is a person who is easily quite easily able to and may not, depending on level of um, maturity, may not be able to recognize that they are not feeling their own emotions because there's such a strong emotional um, undercurrent that um, they separated it off and actually brought this, this intellect was to balance out the strong current of energy, which led to compartmentalizing. So this could be a person who ha really struggles to open their heart center, really struggles to open their heart space, um, and could be extremely nurturing. There is that like this like cuddly, nurturing energy, but it will only express itself in ways that are safe for that compartment so that they can feel like they are above board and not looking down into the depths. It's really important for this person to maintain this for a period of time as self-preservation. So they, de they develop this as a way of protecting themselves. Um, and then it's just carried on into their adult life and they're gonna have to, not going to have to, but, and then it's something that, ha that um, may come up as an issue in relationships because they, um, compartmentalize parts of themselves that are needed to truly deeply connect with a partner. So let's take a look at um, relationships. Okay. okay. So in relationships, they really value um, peace and their own space. 
This is a person who is very romantic, um, but they can be kind of hot and cold with their attention. So sometimes they want a lot of attention. They want a lot of cuddles. They want a lot of, um, stimulation from their partner. And sometimes they just want to be left alone. So there is a sort of inconsistency and a lot of that has to do with this compartmentalizing. So it depends on how healthy they are, but at their core, they're a romantic. They really love super, super deeply. Um, they're really, they really value when they can be calm, when they can be the um, bright light and support for another person. That, that's something that they really value in themselves. What else can you know about this person? Okay. So this is actually a person who has a tremendous amount of playful energy that they may or may not express. There's certain things that um, they may have at a certain point considered frivolous and then they, um, they buried it. But again, like I said, they sort of age backwards. So as they grow older, they'll come into this playfulness more and more, um, more dancing, more singing, more playing, more, um, openness to laughing at themselves. Um, they may struggle to laugh at themselves in their younger years and then develop the ability to do that as they get older. This is also someone who is very much altered by being a parent, um, if that's something that they end up doing, they are someone who would really um, find a lot of value and reflective, um, ref reflect inward on themselves, like a lot of growth would come. And also because with children, you're able to open this heart center a little bit more, a little bit more easily and be this affectionate, playful person. And as you, you know, like with all of us, when we have experiences of, um, when we have experiences where it's safe to do those things, then we're more likely to do them. So that's what I'm getting here about this person. They're a very interesting, deep, sort of complex person. There's a lot of different things going on, a lot of different um, a lot of different sort of unexpected things. So again, here we have a, a strong value for home. Um, this is, this is more of that introvert energy, but also the, the need for stability in all things. And that could be what's difficult here for them emotionally is that uh, their emotions aren't, um, stable enough. And so they compartmentalize them off. So at some point, and it's going to be, um, through likely, um, quite difficult transitions, this person will have to unpeel or not have to, but will end up unpeeling these kinds of layers of emotion and finding stability in their emotional selves. I'm seeing stability in their, um, in their, I only know how to put it in elements in their air and their earth. So their air and their earth, their they know how to find stability in their physical surroundings. They know how to find stability in their thoughts, in their intellect. Um, but there's a bit of, um, you know, there can be in their younger years an overabundance of pride. So making choices and decisions out of that space. And, and so they can get stuck. This is a person that can get really stuck in themselves. So let's see how they receive love. How does this person receive love? Ooh, okay. <laughs> the layers keep peeling back about this person. Wow, okay. 
So they receive love in a very primal way. Um, so think primally. What are the basics, the basic needs of survival? If you help this person to survive, they feel supported. Um, this person is not interested in false um, compliments. This person is not interested in, um, in falsity at all. Uh, they are someone who will only feel loved in... So your gift has to be genuine. Your compliment has to be genuine. Your effort has to be genuine. If they have to ask you to do something, um, like that's different than a conversation. So if there's a conversation about needs and desires and wants and whatever, they will and they express something, um, they sort of expect that they're not going to have to repeat themselves, essentially. Like, um, this is the kind of person where it's like, I only want to tell you once. <laughs> um, but they're really going to receive love in acts of service. So, um, you know, bringing home the food, um, preparing food, um, gifts, but even just like really practical gifts that make their home lives better or, you know, whatever life functions you can help and support them with. This is how they receive love. They feel loved if you, um, if they ask you to do something and you do it. So what final information do we have? Okay, so again, this person is someone who can get kind of stuck. Um, they get in ruts. They, they are... <laughs> the big thing with this person is their big emotions that they, that they may have developed unhealthy coping mechanisms for or just not unhealthy, but they develop these coping me mechanisms to survive and, and as they get older, they'll need them less and less, you know? Um, so I'm getting that their thirties are going to be a really big time of shifting this energy, shifting from, you know, if they're, if, if they're younger than 30, if they're in their thirties, this is a big time for them. If they're older than that, their thirties were a big time for, or for shift for that big shift. Um, there's also this sense of, um, you know, their, their, their childhood, their, their younger years weigh them down. And so there will be this like pulling up of the anchor from the ship and becoming more comfortable with their emotions. So it could be that this person needs a lot of um, rational arguments to understand their emotions. They would really benefit from studying these sorts of things. They would benefit. I think I said something about the study of psychology. They would really benefit from the study of psychology because it would give them a deeper insight into themselves and give them the tools. This person needs a lot of information in order to... Um, shift into their heart space, which sounds counter to, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but that's who this person is. And their final card, <laughs> more about emotional avoidance. So this fish is flying over the water, jumping over the water. So there's definitely some emotional avoidance in this person. Um, even if they cry, even if they, they, they connect, they just don't have a deep emotional, their emotional intelligence is the last intelligence to evolve. Um, even though they have quite strong boundaries, that's not their issue here. Um, sometimes this, this can be like a bit of a Piscean mutable thing. That's not really what's going on here. They have really strong boundaries. Um, but it's not focusing. They have really strong boundaries, but they are, how do I put this? 
they're apt to intellectualize their feelings before experiencing them. It's interesting that we have 34 and 35. I feel like 34 and 35 are really important years in their lives. Um, and there's this oscillation between emotional recognition and then kind of going backwards and emotional recognition and going backwards. So this could be the process of them opening their heart. So if you're wondering how you can hold space for this person, how you can understand this person a little bit better, I think that that is the key to it. Um, and, you know, lightly suggesting or or providing them tools for opening the heart space. Certainly don't, don't rush in and be like, you need to open your heart space. Um, that's not how it works. But, you know, um, there are frequencies on YouTube even that you can just play in the background that will help to open the heart space. But this is a big, um, a big amount of work that it takes, so like many years to, to learn to open this up, particularly if there's an anchor back in childhood. All right, so that's what I have for you, pile number two. I hope this was interesting. I hope this gave you some insight. Please leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, like the video, that helps out so much, and we'll see you later. All right, pile number three. So these readings have been quite deep, um, a lot more than I expected. So let's see what we've got here for you. So keeping in mind, this could be a person that you know, this could be, um, this could be about you, or this could be about a character that you're writing. If you need a little bit more insight into what makes them tick. So just whatever resonates for you here in terms of who this is about. And we're going to take a look at how they give and receive love. Um, my candle keeps burning out here. It's like drowning in its own wax. One of the beautiful things, I made this candle myself. And it is such a beautiful candle. And it's made out of soy wax, so it's healthier, <laughs> and a wood wick, but the wood wick burns too slowly for the soy. Anyway, that was a tangent. Um, oh, okay. Oh, that smells so good. All right, let's see what's going on with this person now that I've tangented, 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 woo. All right. <laughs> There's a bit of a victim complex here. This person often finds, um, feels sorry for themselves or reflects on why me or puts them in themselves in positions. So this could be someone that they, they put themselves in restrictive relationships. They, put themselves in restrictive jobs. It, it could be the kind of person that like, it seems like they, they like to complain about their job. They do it enough that you start to think they just want to complain. You could offer them solutions and they still kind of just keep doing the same thing. Um, I'm also getting that they are quite fragile. So even if they make quips or jokes or are very frank with other people, they're very sensitive to anything um, critical. They do not take criticism well. So there's a fragility to this person. Surprise. <laughs> oh, they never get things and everyone else gets things. And why don't, when's their ship going to come in? And why don't they get things? And how come so-and-so? And always looking in someone else's lane and feeding into gossip. And, you know, ultimately this person just has like a deep sensitivity um, to negativity. Um, they get really caught up in low vibrational energy. But let's take a look at, let's take a look at maybe why, why does this person get caught up in this low vibrational energy? I'm using Lenormand cards. Do you want me to shuffle in front? Leave a comment below. 
I don't know if that's something that people want or if I should just shuffle back here behind my camera. Crossroads. Okay, so again, like I don't mean to crap all over this person. Um, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing, okay? So this is the kind of person who acts like they don't have choices. <laughs> they come to a crossroads and then they, they blame someone else. They um, make excuses. There's a lot of excuses here. There's a lot of, I didn't have a choice. This is what I had to do um, kind of thing. And, and keeping in mind, like if this is about you, I'm really sorry. Um, but also this is something that can be turned around. Like this level of sensitivity and the, you know, we all fall into these pitfalls. That's the thing is like, Having it in your personality is a bit different though. Um, it takes a lot more work to step out of those things. So it doesn't just take, you know, some inspirational quote in a book to step out of this victim mentality or this mentality of, um, I don't have choices. I'm, you know, everything is happening to me. Um, this could be someone who is really wrapped up in like, Someone who is really wrapped up in that, like taking things personally, um, even when it wasn't meant to be personal. Let's take a look at their childhood. Let's see what we can see in their childhood. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, their childhood was some, somewhat uneventful. Um... They had a parent who really loved them. Um, they may have been given a lot of things, protected a lot, definitely protected a lot. I want another card for their childhood because this is really interesting and unexpected because we have this, you know, negative energy. It's just kind of like shitty attitude. <laughs> and then I hope this isn't about you. Um, if it is, like, just keep in mind that um, these are things that can be turned around. My gosh, this person had, like, They could have been really sheltered, honestly, um, and that sheltering is kind of given them this like sense of entitlement or um, unrealistic expectations about what the world owes them or what they are, what is their responsibility. Um, I'm getting, yeah, a lot of sheltering, particularly from a, a mother figure. Someone who always fights your battles, who gets in involved in those battles as well. Like, oh, this is the kind of parent, now I'm getting into their parent, but that would call like a university professor to stand up for their child. Like this is someone who has never fought their own battles. And so when anything comes up, they feel personally slighted by it, um, but it's because they were sheltered, not because they necessarily experienced a ton of hardship. Um, really interesting, okay. I don't know that I know anyone like this. So let's see what else is in their energy. Okay, so they want, I'm, okay. Libra. Libra is coming in really strong here. They like nice things, um, but they always feel like they never get enough nice things. So this is the kind of person where, let's say, if this is a, you know, a girl, maybe she complains a lot that her boyfriend doesn't get her enough presents. Um, this is a person who really values getting things, having things done for them. Um, there's a lot of entitlement in this person. And, um, it makes it hard to see the good in them. So let's take a look at, let's find out what is the good in this person. Cause we're just being really hard on them right now. Let's see what's the good in this person. 
Um, <laughs> okay, well, um, they are generous. So when they have, when they have, you have. So they're quite generous. Um, they have good tastes. And <laughs> I feel like I'm reaching. They have good taste. Um, let me. They're extroverted. So they're definitely going to be the kind of person where if you need to meet anyone or you need to know anyone, they're going to hook you up. I don't know if that's a reason to stay friends with a person like this, but... Um, so they definitely have a developed social network. Um, uh, that could be why they compare themselves a lot. Let's see what else is good about this person. Woo. Okay. So they are really magnetic. They're pretty shiny. I'm getting that they're, they're a good looking person and they're the kind of person that even though they have a lot of this like gossipy energy, a lot of people want to be around them. Interesting. Wow. It's almost like, I don't know anyone like this because of, you know, where I'm from and my life experience, but it's almost what I perceive as like that socialite energy of, um, having nice things, being really social, everybody knows you connecting people, but then there's this, um, almost stuntedness where they don't really They can't fully connect with people. This person could be heavily involved with a certain kind of spirituality as well. So they may be religious or um, maybe they're all in on yoga, that kind of thing. Um, they may even... Oh, okay. So some of these people actually preach like love and light. They do interesting at the core this is an interesting pile like whoever picked this pile please comment down below and let me know I really hope you didn't pick this pile for yourself um if you did though I would say focus on these things like or if you're trying to deal with this person maybe it's a family member maybe it's someone that's unavoidable in your life focus on these beautiful qualities focus on these good qualities and you know the um, we can always strengthen our relationship with people when we can recognize the beauty in them. Okay. So this person can be quite moody. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you're still with me, this person can be quite moody, um, and elitist a little bit like, um, they like to one up people and they like to have, an a leg up. So they're sort of like, they, they, they don't shy away from revenge and that kind of like Scorpio energy. I'm getting Libra and Scorpio. Those are the main ones that I've gotten so far in terms of signs. So how does this person give love? How does this person give love? Okay. So if this person shows you off, if they walk around with you, if they're like, they will big you up. This person shows love um, mostly with words, a little bit of action, um, probably by way of um, gifting, but also who they'll introduce you to. So whoever they introduce you to, um, you will be their number one. I'm getting though that they do tend to have a lot of number ones. They're a very social person. So it could be that they have a different number one often for, um, they could have had multiple marriages as well because there's like this level of deep commitment to whoever is number one at the time, but the next shiny thing comes along. Um, 
and they're on to the next but this person will definitely parade you around they'll be like check this person out check out what they're doing um almost like marketing like that's if they start to market you that means that they really care about you really love you um how do they receive love i think we already see that oh affection so this person really appreciates affection and protection, which is definitely rooted in their childhood with the protection aspect of it, but they just want to be adored. They want to be carried around like a backpack. Um, they expect this like demonstration as well that you, um, you know, this is not someone where they want you to be shy about, about them on their social media or your social media, they want to be shown off and they want to be comfortable, protected. So they want material comfort as well as physical comfort. Um, and to just be able to like socialize and, you know, be themselves within that space. They don't really um, like to take care of earthly concerns or of the nitty gritty. And what is the final thing we can know about this person? This is so very different from the other two files. So what is the final thing we can know about this person? Are you? You're it. Okay. So there is a propensity for gossip, for um, they can make people think what they want them to think. So there's definitely a lot of influence here, a lot of, um, power without foundation. Um, the foundation always comes from someone else with this person. They don't provide their own foundation. Um, but they definitely are someone that I wouldn't trust honestly, um, too much unless they're, you know, evolved and have discovered these qualities in themselves and have worked on, um, you know, with all of these qualities, they're fairly immature, honestly. Um, so if you're asking about someone that's older, that would be, you know, take it how it resonates in terms of their growth. So maybe these are foundational qualities and they've grown out of them. Um, and you're just experiencing these like beautiful qualities about them, the good qualities about them. But this is someone who, I mean, if you wanted to destroy someone's reputation, you could easily just um, tell this person that information. This is a person who's going to, um, not going to keep things secret for you. Okay. So that's what I have for pile number three. Thank you so much. Please leave me a comment below, like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you soon. Okay, pile number four. Welcome to your reading. You chose the stone, potentially the number four. However you got here, welcome. So this could be a reading, a personality sketch about yourself. It could be about someone you know. Um, certainly based on the last reading, I hope the last person was not asking about themselves. Um, but if they were, that it was a learning experience. So yeah, we've got all kinds of things going on. Maybe you're an artist or a writer and you're just needing to develop a character more intensely or you need some inspiration. So whatever you're here for, welcome. You're also welcome to choose more than one pile. So let's take a look at this person in question, haughtiness. Okay, so this person is big on blanket statements. This is the first thing I'm getting. So they are the kind of person that will say always, you always do this. Um, they tend to generalize and use a lot of anecdotal evidence for things. Um, the reason is that this person really wants to impress people. They really feel... Um, I, I would imagine usually this behavior comes from deep insecurity, but take it how it resonates. They want to demonstrate that they know things. And so, um, and they tend to say things with a lot of certainty and a lot of, 
authority, but you may notice that it can be very anecdotal and it can be very, um, uh, sometimes baseless, sometimes baseless. Let's take a look at this other card. Wedding. Okay. And they like to knit you, you or other people into this narrative. So, um, this is the kind of person who's going to call on you to back them up, right? So they may end up going to 10 different people to, to, there was this comedian that did this thing about like, where's my friend who agrees with me? Like that kind of thing where it was like, you know, um, they make these sort of sweeping statements and then they try and get other people involved in it. But they're a loving person generally. Um, they are very interested in people. This is definitely more of an extroverted kind of personality. Um, they're very interested in... Um, what's going on with people? And so they could be you know, in a more immature, um, it depends on where they're at with all of these personalities that I've been talking about. It depends on where they're at in their, in their maturity, but they could be pretty gossipy, um, and fairly extreme in their ideas. So let's get more information about this person. This is a pretty meaty reading. So, all right. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, you're having a conversation and with someone at a party or a gathering and this person comes in and they will interrupt the conversation and make it about them. Um, they always have to have a say in everything. There's this, there can be a little bit of, a, um, of energy vampirism here. Um, and we all do that to an extent. We all have all of these, like anything that I talk about is some, is going to be something that, you know, can be a quality that everyone possesses. But this is like, you know, where it's at the level of it's more ingrained in their personality. It's more of who they are. Like it's what makes them tick. It's what's underneath the surface. So the, the, there's this kind of self-involvement a little bit here um, and a privilege of their emotions over anyone else's. So this is not someone who's going to sit and listen to your troubles if they've got troubles of their own. Their troubles take precedence, um, which is fine. But um, just to note, okay, so there's definitely water here. So they're deeply sensitive, deeply emotional, um, but they have a tendency to act like they're shallow um, and respond as if they're shallow. So there's this like brushing off of, of depth, um, even though they may have quite a bit of depth. But this is someone who is going to come in with, all of the feels, you're going to know if their boyfriend broke up with them. You're going to know um, that the person at the yogurt shop didn't talk to them the way they want to be talked to. You're going to know all of that information. Um, this could be someone actually who is like that right off the bat, like you first meet them and they, um, <laughs> this is a TMI kind of energy from this person. I think I should probably stop saying this could be about yourself. Oh, okay. So I'm getting information about their childhood. Oh, wow. Okay. Very clearly. So there is a split in their life. There's two different lives that they, that they, um, they live. So this could mean that their parents, 
divorced at some point and they lived in two different places, but this person developed these qualities adaptively. So to fit in and to feel comfortable and confident in whatever environment they were in, they've sort of like morphed their personality to be extremely social so that they can talk to anybody so that they can, you know, they just come in and sort of, um, so when they, you know, step into these conversations or they interject and they make it about them, it's because they're trying to relate. They're trying to belong. Um, and this comes from some sort of split in their life. It could be, it could be a split. It could be a divorce. Um, this could also be that someone really important to them died actually when they were a child. And, and so there's sort of life what I'm getting is there's a life before and there's a life after, and then there's adaptive, um, adaptive behaviors that came out of this split that they had no control over. So inviting a little bit of compassion in for them. Um, it, it could have been that this split also represented like they went from being more dependent, feeling more secure to feeling more insecure. So maybe, you know, in this is the kind of scenario where in the split, um, one of the parents who was like a parent that they were really close to ends up dating someone new and really like absorbing themselves in that and kind of forgetting to give this child as much attention. But there's really, um, this is a person that has a, a it feels like a big family and really strong roots. So a big connection to their ancestry. I'm also getting that they really look like their relatives, um, but take that how it resonates. There is a, um, yeah, like a deep connection. They might be friends with their cousins, you know, like a close knit family. They do all the holidays together, that kind of thing. Um, and there is a warmth that comes from their family. So even though they experience this split at some point, there is a lot of strength in their family and in their background. So let's see what else we can know about this person. Is... All right, so definitely someone who likes to be center of attention. Um, it could be that they're very exceptional in their family. So there's something about them. There's an accomplishment that really stands out. And so they were given a lot of authority to speak of themselves with authority um, because they are or do tend to find themselves in situations where they have skills and abilities or knowledge that the people around them don't have. So for instance, um, you know, if they were the first ones in their family to go to university, um, they would then speak with a certain level of authority in compens compensating for that, sort of being like, I'm the smart one in my family, or I'm the one that had the privilege of going to school. And so they overcompensate in a way and, and act um, kind of like a know-it-all sometimes. Um, but there is this really magnetic, beautiful quality to this person, this sort of shiny, um, people are interested in them. You know, they're, they're interested in being around them. They may have a lot of friends, um, or a lot of acquaintances. So this could be a person who knows a lot of people. Okay, and again, with the moon, there, there's this reflective quality about them, um, this watery element that isn't fully in their youth, fully developed. So um, overcompensate is the word that just keeps coming up. They overcompensate for absolutely everything with everything. <laughs> um, and this we can be compassionate toward, right? Because, you know, um, this is how we mask our, or this is how we deal with our insecurities when we're young. Um, there's also this really beautiful quality that they have of reflecting beautiful things back to other people. So this is a person, as much as they say things like, 
I always do this or I'm so great at that. They are also someone who is very keen on um, in their sort of less self, self-absorbed self moments of, of pointing those things out in other people and really perceiving um, gifts. They have a gift for seeing other people's gifts, which is really interesting because, you know, in a conversation with a person like this, you wouldn't even know that they're noticing you at all. It seems like they're only noticing themselves. And then all of a sudden they'll bust out some insight and you're like, whoa, cool. I did not know that was there. So there's definitely hidden depths to this person. Um, I think I said earlier, like how they really kind of in a shallow way, but there is a hidden depth to them. So we're going to see how they receive love. <laughs> it's very clear. Okay. So they receive love um, through gifts, through nice things, through shiny things. Um, but also they like lavish, expensive things. So the more money you spend, the better for this kind of person. This isn't just a thoughtful gift kind of person. This is a, um, get me the pretty nice thing. They also really value marriage. Um, so this is a fairly traditional person in the sense that they want the ring, they want the engagement party, the buck and doe, the, you know, the, the big expensive wedding. This person wants it all. Um, They want all the, the, the normal things, I guess you could say, or the ordinary things, the, the house in the suburbs, the car, the two kids, the whole, that's their, their whole thing. And I, and I, and it feels like they have a lot of people around them that really, um, support them in this. Um, so if this is, if you're asking about a masculine, um, this could be, you know, expensive toys like, um, TV, uh, ATV, nice truck, whatever. <laughs> I know that it's a little bit more complex than that, but, um, just taking it out of the realm of jewelry, even though we have this visual of jewelry, there's, there's other, um, foundational sort of foundational. Why am I saying foundational? There's other material things that can, that can express, um, that someone has spent a lot of money on you and they also receive love by being cared for in kind of a major way, like, um, This is a person who wants their laundry to be done by other people. Um, they ask a lot. This person asks a lot of their romantic partner um, in terms of care, gifts. Um, yeah, they're a pretty high maintenance partner, to be honest. They also, again, this, it, it, they want children. How do they give love? Is this person, we know how they take it. Let's see how they give it. Okay. So they give love by letting people into this deep emotional space. Um, by telling their secrets, this is a person who keeps, keeps things close to their chest, but doesn't also acknowledge them themselves. So, um, yeah, though they're extroverted, there is a, a very close inner circle that may only have one or two people in it. And so that's how they give love as they allow people into that space. And they also, mm, they also give love by opening doors for people. So if, um, if they're offering you like an opportunity to work with someone 
to however they could facilitate an opportunity for you or open a door for you. That's something that they're going to do if they love you. That's how they're going to show love is they're going to, um, almost try and clear the way for you to do something. Although there may be expectations with that. So if you don't do what they have set up for you to do, there could be like a little bit of weirdness there, but um, that's definitely one of the ways that they show love. And what else can we know? What's our final thing to know about this person? So maybe not all flattering things, but interesting things and things we can certainly be... Um, compassionate about okay so yeah there's you know this isn't there's some good things you take the bad with the good right and if if you feel that this is a personality that meshes well with you then that's great um this is not someone that is for everyone they're there could be some backstabbing. There could be some um, shutting people out. And I really feel like the social circle around them permits this. So this person can just kind of decide that person's out and that person is out. Um, there's definitely work to be done for them to let this emotional side out a little bit more. I'm getting Scorpio and Aries vibe. So um, it can feel very cold on the outside of this person. It's a kind of a Virgo thing too. So a bunch of different things coming up, but, um, yeah, if they don't want to see you, you're not there. And it doesn't matter how long you've known them. Mm. Yeah. Disloyalty is the word I want to say. But you know, there's these other qualities. We've got the star, the moon, the tree. So um, there's a lot of good and bad qualities in everyone. So just keeping these things in mind. Hopefully that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe to my channel so I can keep making more of these videos. Um, and we'll see you soon. Group number five. This has been a wild ride, let me tell you. Such interesting personalities coming up for us. So this could be about you. This could be about someone you know. This could be about a family member. Or perhaps you're an artist or a writer and you want to um, dig a little bit deeper into some character development. Um for a portrait that you've drawn or a story that you're writing. So let's take a look at who this person is. All right, so this is a person that has a big presence. Um, they feel sort of powerful to be around. Maybe you can't even describe it. Maybe they don't in their lives seem to have a lot of power as we would think of it traditionally, but they definitely feel that way. Um, there's this sense that everything kind of, um, bows down to them. So it's, it's sort of like for good fortune, but it's in relation to people. Um, people want to do things for this person inexplicably. Um, yeah, they have a certain authority and when they speak, it has more weight than when someone else may speak. They also have this quality about them that is very, it's like epic. <laughs> epic. 
you're not quite sure what you're looking at or what you're around or what you're in the presence of. Like it's someone who is the protagonist of their own story. That's for sure. Someone who has, um, really almost celebrity like qualities, I guess this, um, so they may be uh, well known in whatever they, they do, or they may be on their way to that, or just have that it quality, something about them that is, um, really big, but they also go through a lot of transformations. So while they maintain this like, um, sense of authority, they maintain authority in all different realms, like all different areas. So this could be, this could be a person who is like, you know, becomes top of their game in one field and then switches and becomes top of the top of the game in this other field and they just sort of they are able to make that full transformation they are able to be many people in one so this could also be this could be an actor for sure someone who's um who who morphs for their job or someone who is just really good at shape-shifting um but there's more than shape-shifting to this because it's not as surface level as that it's this person has the ability to be all of these people um, they really throw themselves into their interests. So there could be like ADD, ADHD here, um, a little bit of that where, you know, they become a master of all different kinds of things and they're able to, um, fully throw themselves into those things. And it's certainly not just ADHD people that can do that, but I am getting that for some of these people. So let's take a look at what else do we want to know about this person? We got a lot of cards to pull. So... What else can we know about our pile number five's person? About their personality right here. You. Okay. So there's a bit of a darker side to this personality. Um, I'm actually getting that their lifestyle um, is maybe a little bit kinky or alternative to some people. They live sort of on the edge of or on the fringes of what is taboo or appropriate so it could be even just in the way that they dress it could be their sexuality um, but it could also be that they are just kind of sometimes very difficult to to deal with um, that they have a sort of controversial way of looking at the world and that could be what's challenging there's something that's challenging about this person but the, the way that they're challenging is like a threshold. It's like a portal for other people to co go through these transformations themselves. So being in the presence of this person and being in their like authority really um, helps people to transform. It's almost like, you know, like I think that you would say these things about someone who becomes a cult leader. Not that this person is a cult leader, but if you're like, yeah, that sounds right, like, you know, people would like follow them in a cult, then um, you're probably at the right pile. So let's take a look at their childhood. Let's see what's going on with their childhood. Okay. So their childhood isn't a thing that they um, really remember a whole lot about, actually. There's a lot of um, foggy energy around that. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. It could be past trauma. It could be, um, you know, maybe that they suffered from some depression. It could be that they were again with the ADD inattentive. So they just don't have a lot of strong formed memories. Um, but there is an anchor for them in the past with the number six here. Um, it's six when it's right side up with the number six here. Um, a lot of their um, a lot of their transformations come from reflecting on the past, but their past is foggy. So only certain things come out through the fog. Um, I'm getting that their childhood, the best parts of their childhood were in nature. And so they may, as an adult, be more attracted to nature they may work in nature or or um, spend a lot of time there or have a lot of interests hobbies that that lead them there I want to get another card for their childhood and see what else what else can we know about their childhood and there's this sort of patterns that 
are in that fog, patterns that developed out of their childhood um, that they're discovering as an adult. Okay, strong um, ancestral roots, strong um, connection to tradition. Okay, interesting. So this person is connected to some kind of traditional practice or um, lineage. So this could be academic, religious. Um, they definitely look back to understand forward. And that, I think that's what we're getting here from this, um, from this card is that they look back to look forward. So they really, um, maybe they studied history and they observe the patterns of history and that has given them the ability to see forward into the future based on the patterns of the past. Um, there's, there's definitely deep roots here i'm still not getting okay and there's their their magnetism as well their breakthroughs come in this really backwards sort of way and that can be how it feels to relate to them that you don't quite know what's happening at the time. This is a really unusual person. Okay, so you don't quite know what's happening at the time, but you later reflect back or something they say resonates with you and it just really, really sticks with you for um, maybe years and years and years. This is the kind of person who makes an impact on everyone they meet, but they come about it in such a strange way that you don't really know what's happening. They're like a force of nature. This person is like a force of nature. And that can be where the conflict comes in as well, where the, it's difficult to, to know where they're coming from or to relate to them. There's so much sky here. Okay. Um, so there's a level of seriousness with this person. Um, I'm not really getting a whole lot of like frivolity or like they could have been um, someone who was quite serious as a child. And, but like they're very much in their own head. So this is a really imaginative person as well. Um, very creative, very imaginative. And it's out of this creativity and this ability to be imaginative, that they are able to create a lot of the luck in their life, but also a lot of that influence that they have over other people, because no one is nearly as creative as they are, or wears as many hats as they do. You know, some people will specialize in one thing. This person specializes in many different things and they keep moving on. And so there's this sense of like play and enjoyment in their work. And when that work is not playful or enjoy, enjoyful, <laughs> that's not a word. Um, when they're not enjoying it anymore, they sort of move on to the next thing. Let's see what they're like with people. Like, what is it to relate to this person? Okay, so people really trust what this person has to say. There's this feeling of the ancient with them, like that they have access to information that no one else has access to. It could be because they have this like, you know, really magnetic personality and they also have this strong sense of history. So they're well studied. Um, they're also extremely creative. They're always generating something and they're also, I would, I'm thinking about the snake that eats its tail here with the death and they're constantly rebirthing. So they're constantly becoming these other people while they maintain this like strong, firm sense of authority and a true essence. Um, the snake wrapping around the tree feels significant because we have the tree in their childhood it's like they have squeezed everything out of their past out of the not just their past but human history um they extract everything they can to make the most for now and for today what does this person like to relate to that was the question 
I think just very ancient, like people don't know how to relate to them. So let's see how they receive love. They receive love through ruin. Ugh, they see beauty and disaster. This is a difficult love life. Um, so this, per <laughs> this person really receives love through through the jumbled mess. So if you were to express how difficult it was to get to them, that would mean a lot to them. If you were to express how difficult it was to get a particular gift for them, that would mean a lot to them. Th thoughtfulness is, is huge for pile number five's personality here. Um, if they know that you have thought about them, that is extremely meaningful. There's also this, like, they do like to be flattered. They like to be elevated. Um, so they really receive love through being flattered. Let's see how they give love. I'm so interested to know how this person gives love. It's a very, ooh, very interesting personality we've got going on here. I dropped this card. Okay, so how they give love. Singing praises. So a lot of verbal affirmation. Um, so again, that's something that they sort of, that's how they receive love is how they give love. Um, they may also quite literally sing. Um, so if they are a musician and that's how they are well known or how they're influential, they would write songs about you or play songs for you or create melodies for you. Um, this person gives love by becoming harmonious with your energy. Interesting. So by becoming harmonious with your energy, um, by becoming harmonious with your family, with your friends, um, fitting into your life. This person wants to fit into your life and to move as you move and vice versa. So there's a lot of interdependence here. Interesting. What else can we know about this person? <laughs> I'm like, I want to know. <laughs> what else do we know about this person? Oh, that went really far. <laughs> the cards just fly out. Okay, this person wants to be or is a really strong parental figure. They care for, in this case, I feel like they care for a lot of people, but they also really value the nest, they value the home, they value a, like a family unit. So partnership is gonna be really important to this person. Um, I'm really getting that sense of like, I don't know some people call it twin flames or, or soulmates, um, but just that like, um, bonding, like strong bonding to their own family unit. Because as much as they like yield or harvest from the past, this is very much a forward moving energy about creating new. So even creating people, creating family um, is really important to this person. Um, they would be very satisfied even though they they can get a lot of notoriety publicly they would be very satisfied um to to have that or they would be more satisfied to have that um in their home so it's more like a virgo versus a capricorn where capricorn wants it externally virgo wants it in the home and finally, this person, oh my goodness. So there's a huge spiritual significance to this person. This person is a spiritual guide or teacher. They have 
so many different shining aspects, so many different parts of themselves that whether they are spiritual or not, people are following them in that way. They will follow their word in that way. So you know how, um, you know, even in a workplace, like someone who is a, a, a boss or a, a teacher or a leader, um, there's a, a way that people can almost follow them spiritually, even if it's not specifically like spiritual teachings or something like that. It's just people will follow them into battle. Um, and it's because this person has within them this sort of like map of little lights that guide people through the dark. Um, and, you know, a lot of this past energy has a lot to do with though it's not explicitly dark, there's a lot of light imagery. They know how to be reborn. They've recreated themselves so many times over. So, you know, anyone who hasn't done that is going to look to this person for wisdom because they know what it is to continuously become and unbecome and become and unbecome. And they have this authority and they have this like bright shining energy. So Leo is represented here as well. There's a strong Leo current, um, Leo and Virgo. The month of August. <laughs> so I think that's all I have for you, pile number five. Thank you so much for joining me. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know how this resonated. Um, subscribe to my channel. Give the video a like. It really helps out. Thank you so much. Bye.